Pure Love. I'm Ignacio Rivera and I'm Amanda Rivera or Mandy. Yeah, and um, I'm her parent or her mom. <laughs> so um, Pure Love, as it says on our website, uh, an honest, vulnerable and intimate talk show about creating sustainable relationships with our children, normalizing the sex talk and shifting the culture of sexual abuse. So I hope uh, that you're ready to have some really good conversations with us. Um, Please be sure to check out our website, ask us questions, give us feedback. We would totally love that. Okay, so we're going to start off by intro so you know who we are. Um, this is my beautiful, beautiful daughter, Amanda Rivera, or Mandy. Uh, Mandy is, I always describe you as a black boricua taino um, femme diva uh, who is... Um, who loves to read, reads tons of books when she was younger. She would read like four and five books and was reading like college level shit when um, she was so young. Uh, loves to write, uh, although not writing too much these days, I'm always at her about that stuff, but uh, loves to write as a great poet, also very, very funny, um, comical, uh, great story uh, teller. Uh, a little awkward right now, is a little shy. Always uh, awkward. <laughs> Um, has a different color hair about just about every other month, right? I think she's had every color hair that is uh, known to mankind. Uh, what else about Mandy? Um, she is, I call her the child whisperer. Uh, she loves, loves, loves working with children. Um, they take to her so well. She was made to work with children. She just has a great communication style with them. Um, and I'm a mermaid. Yes, that's right. She <laughs> identifies as a mermaid. Why do you identify as a mermaid? Um, uh, I just, I like the ocean. I like, the water really calms me. Um, yeah, my, yeah. Yes, that too. I feel a connection with her. Um, I don't know anything that has to do with the ocean, the sea, the creatures, the water, the sand, the sun. It makes me really happy. makes me feel peaceful. Yeah, as long as I can remember, like, when she was young, I forget what age you went into a pool for the first time and she just stood there the entire day. So <laughs> she's definitely connected to water, although she's an Aries and pure fire, like fire. Uh, anybody who's f Facebook friends with her knows how much she bitches on Facebook about something or another, right? <laughs> so don't get on her bad side. Um, what else? Um, um, yeah, I think that's, and, and you just, yeah, she's a loyal person, like a loyal friend um, to her people, and sometimes to a fault, and um, and also identifies and is really taking ownership of uh, someone who has a mental illness. Uh, so that is my beautiful daughter, 26-year-old, Amanda Rivera, also known as Mandy, and uh, the lover of Ariel the Mermaid. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is my mom, Ignacio. Um, how would I describe you? I would say you're a, Make it good. <laughs> a nurturer, an educator, um, very strong convictions. Um, you have a good sense of like the balance of things of right and wrong and, you know, like consequences and all things like that. That's um, my Libra side. Yeah, that's the Libra side. <laughs> um, I would say that, well, one, I think a lot of people know they identify as a unicorn. Um, so we have a lot of mythological creatures in the bloodline. <laughs> um, um, I would say one of my favorite things about them would be just all the important work that you do. Um, everything you do is so important in all types of communities and I meet people all the time and I make new friends who know of you 
and there's like you're a celebrity in their eyes. So, you know, I'm just like, ooh, I feel like a celebrity too. So, <laughs> like, you know, I know them, you know, but um, everything you do is really important. And I know there's a lot of people whose lives you probably saved or made better or, you know, gave them something to hope for because of the work you do and letting them know they're not alone and educating others so they can deal accordingly. Um, one of my, well, the best friend I've ever had. Um, Someone I love very much. <laughs> and pain in my butt. Yes. <laughs> always. Always. That's what a parent's supposed to do. I mean, for some people who might be a little confused about you calling me mom, what's that about? Well, I mean, my one, you're my birth giver. You gave birth to me, so you're my mom. Um, but even though you're gender fluid or gender queer and go as they, um, that title of mommy is very important to me and to you. Yes. So. No matter what your expression is, you're still going to be mommy. Yes, so. yes. And that's not the case for other trans people, but for me it is the case that uh, mother is a title that has always fit, feels fantastic, and it'll never change for me. So I will always be a mother no matter how I look. Um, so yeah, super important. Okay, so uh, why this chalk show? Why pure love? What is it about? So you want to talk about that? Mm -hmm. You describe it better, because, yeah, you have the whole, like, realization, the aha moment, so I you should explain it. Well, um, Pure Love came about because I am the, the founder of a project called The Heal Project, and I was very blessed to get a fellowship from the Just Beginnings Collaborative, um, which uh, gave uh, funding to eight survivors of color um, of child sexual abuse to create our own project. Uh, to um, address and hopefully ultimately end child sexual abuse. So I've been working on that and I have various little projects um, connected to that, um, to that initiative, uh, some of which are online social media campaigns, something called Outing CSA, which are survivors of child sexual abuse um, identifying themselves as survivors, almost like ending the secrecy and being okay with telling the world you know, these are all the ways w in which I identify, you know, whether their gender, their sexual orientation, how old they are, their racial background, and in addition to those things, I happen to be a, a survivor of child sexual abuse. And then we have um, the Sex Ed Is campaign where we ask a bunch of people about, like, sex education. Um, how did sex ed or the lack of sex ed impact them in growing up? Um, and so the platform for the HEAL project is that comprehensive sex education is an important tool to ultimately ending child sexual abuse. And so as a part of that project, I started thinking, every time I thought about my project, I kept on thinking about all the conversations we had while I was raising you. And I was like, well, really, this is almost like a model for how I raised you. And not that I had a manual or anything like that, and in no way, shape, or form are we saying, or I'm saying, that my um, you know, parenting style is like the best. Oh, there were trials and there were errors, <laughs> you know, um, lots of mistakes and a lot of good stuff. But I think the point about how I talk to you directly about sex and sex education was um, healing for me. Uh, in a big way as a survivor and also I think really helpful for you as a, a young woman, a young black woman in the world. Uh, I think it was really helpful. So I wanted to use that model and I've always wanted to work with my daughter um, in some way, shape or form and she always turns me down, always. And so this time <laughs> I was like, um, do a talk show with me. Let's, let, let's just talk and this is not scripted. Um, this is honest, raw conversation about the fuck ups and the good stuff around um, talking about sex, but not only that, doing like integration around race, body image, mental health stuff, anything that we want to talk about, um, because I think these things seem to be like really private and we want to make them, there is no manual for parenthood. There really isn't. Uh, and so we wanted to share that. And I think that storytelling is a really important tool. Um, so that's why I think I wanted to create Pure Love. And so why the name Pure Love? I told you the story. Mm -hmm. Um, I might be chopping and screwing it up, um, <laughs> but I know you said you were thinking about a title for the talk show and it came to you once you, because you have a box of all the little like gifts and trinkets and drawings and stuff that I give you and you titled it Pure Love and then you had 
the aha moment and you realize that would be a good name? Yeah, because I, I think, I often think no matter how difficult uh, a parent-child relationship can be, because it is, it's challenging, you learn along the way, trials and errors, I, I often think about it as the purest kind of love. Um, and so I was like, I kept on thinking, what the hell do I want to call the show? What do I want to call it? And then I looked up at the box and I was like, yeah, pure love. That just seems right. And when I did a search, I didn't tell you this, but when I did a search on Twitter and stuff, when you look up the tag pure love, it's mostly a parents who yeah, tag so that yeah. as for them and their children. So I thought it was just like perfect. Okay. So. One of the things, uh, our first episode was really about introducing ourselves and then also telling you about you know, what the show is going to be and what to expect. So we expect that you send us questions. Uh, we expect that you let us know what it is you want us to talk about. And if you don't, we'll make some shit up and we'll talk to you <laughs> about a whole slew of things. Um, some of your topics might come up in our upcoming episodes. You never know. It right. might be something we're already thinking about or you gave us inspiration. Right, and you know, we'll, we'll talk about um, what it was like for me to come out as a lesbian and later on as a trans person to my child who I was raising uh, the first time she had sex uh, you know when we talked about it how difficult it was as a parent who is a survivor of CSA to really be open and honest with my child about sex and being so scared that something was gonna happen to you all the time um, and and kind of like trying to hold back that fear because I didn't want to lead with fear with her or have um, me go about my sexual experiences as like a child of a survivor in a way, like kind of living through your fears exactly. or, you know, your trauma. Exactly. So. Um, so, um, well, so we want to answer a question that I have been asking of people through the Sex Ed Is um, campaign and other people as well. Just curiosity is like, so when when was the first time um, you learned about sex? Like when was the that first moment that you remember learning about sex? So I'll answer first, and then you can think about what your answer is. So for me, I always laugh about it because of like I never learned about sex. Um, I think uh, my parents come of a different era, and um, it was something that I think they wanted to wait until I was older. Or until uh, you were married and pregnant to tell you exactly, about. but that didn't happen. <laughs> that didn't happen because a lot of other things happen in between. Um, mental health stuff, me running away when I was young, also getting pregnant at a young age. Um, I got pregnant when I was eighteen, had her when I was nineteen, so I was a young, independent parent. Um, so my parents actually really never sat down to talk to me about it. There wasn't an opportunity, and I think there was a lot of fear around it. I think they came of the school that. If you give the information, then it'll happen. And I come up the, you know, the information, the the idea that if you give the information, it's less likely that you're going to be running towards it because it's, which is yeah. exactly what happened. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Uh, so, yeah. So uh, me, I think I learned. Um, I mean, I learned unfortunately through my sexual abuse, and and then later on through trial and error. Yeah. Um, I feel like I can't pinpoint an exact moment in the, like the earliest but I feel like it's always been a part of my development like uh, whether it was you just you know being nude or whatever because you know not to, teaching me how to be comfortable with my body and women's bodies in particular mm -hmm. and you know like even with like body hair or whatever the case is so I feel like it was always like a gradual thing and then, you know, later on as you hang out with other kids who have different parents and they might come with other stuff and I ask you things or you see that I'm doing something and you're like, why are you doing that? And it's because I saw it in a movie or this or whatever. And then you would sit me down and explain things to me. Um, but I remember just always very, very young, always having like some type of idea or some like knowledge about something. So I wasn't always completely, completely ignorant about it. You know, it's just like when you're older, you know, you can understand things better, like anatomy and things like that. But, mm -hmm. you know, from my childhood, I've always had basic knowledge as to what it was, I guess. Or, you know, it's still kind of a secret because, you know, you don't know the 
the ins and outs when you're like four, <laughs> but right. you know, you kind of get it. Right. But I've always like known age appropriate stuff. Age yeah, appropriate stuff. leaning me in, but I've always known of it, so it wasn't really it wasn't such a huge mystery that I had to figure it out so quickly by myself because I had nothing to refer to about anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm always appreciative for that. Mm. So that's how we learned about sex. So how did you learn about sex? Something to think about. Um, also, let us know what you want to talk about. Again, go to purelovetalks.com. Um, also, check out the Heal Project, heal the number two um, end.com. So heal to end.com. Um, yeah, check those out. See what we're all about. Um, please support us and engage in this really important conversation. And it's a conversation that should be happening from birth to crossing over. This conversation never ends. It's not one conversation we might have with our kids. It's multiple conversations throughout their entire life. I'm still talking about sex with my daughter, and she's 26. And I share things with her as an adult, and I'm 45. And I want to have that relationship with her. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's crappy. But we do it, right? So um, support us and let us know what you think. Okay? Give us your feedback, and thank you. Let's see you guys. Thank you.